Hello, my name is Kumar Askan Pandey and I am a faculty at Dr. Raman Lohia National University. Today, we shall be talking about the correctional system as applicable in India. Many ideas which are sweeping the criminal justice system in this country all focus on how to correct an individual who on account of a mistake of his life has been declared as unwanted and has been removed from the mainstream of the society. Oscar Wilde once famously said that every saint has a past and every sinner a future. Hate the sin and not the sinner is also an old adage of biblical origin. These clearly underline that every civilized society must be able to reclaim and reintegrate into its mainstream a human resource lost on account of his or her criminality and must make all possible efforts towards this end. Punishing an individual for a criminal act is not an end in itself, it is only a means towards an end and that is reformation and correction of such an individual. As early as in 1920, the Indian Jails Committee had underlined that the reformation and rehabilitation of offenders is the ultimate objective of prison system in this country. Even at the global level, efforts have been made to make correctional system humane and purpose oriented. In 1955, the United Nations standard minimum rules for the treatment of prisoners provided the basic framework for achieving the above stated object. Further, under the aegis of the United Nations, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, ICCPR, propounded in 1977, to which India as a party emphasized that the correctional system's essential aim shall be prisoners' reformation and so social rehabilitation. After having discussed all the issues pertaining to the correctional system in this country, the learner shall have a fair idea about the correctional system within the realm of the criminal justice administration. They shall also become familiar with the system of traditional closed prisons, parole, probation, furlough, open prisons, etc., and the correctional system for the juvenile delinquents as well. Correctional system in India is comprised of institutions, policies, laws, norms and practices which all aim at bringing the offender back to the society as a better human being and making him realize that crime never pays. The laws, practices and procedures of correctional system are scattered in various statutes, rules, regulations and case law. In Ramamurthy versus State of Karnataka, AIR 1997 Supreme Court 1739, the Supreme Court underlined the need to prepare an All India Prison Manual. Now we all know that prisons, reformatories, borstal institutions, etc. are included in the state list, list 2 of the 7th schedule of the Constitution of India and therefore the laws, practices which govern the correctional system in different states may differ from each other. In fact, in the year 2003, the Bureau of Police Research and Development, an apex research institution of the Ministry of Home Affairs, Government of India, prepared an All India Model Prison Manual, which was supposed to be adopted by all the states in India in making those manuals responsive to the changing needs of the society as well as of the convict. However, no progress yet has been made on that front for the obvious reasons. The prison system in India in the contemporary modern sense of the closed prisons has its origin in the British period when the Prisons Act of 1894 was created. Unfortunately, the basic legislative framework of prison system in India is still governed by this archaic law. However, different states have formulated their own prison manuals for the day-to-day -day administration of their prisons, but all these prison manuals derive their authority and jurisdiction 
from the Prisons Act of 1894 alone. The traditional closed prisons in India are mainly of three types. The first kind is that of central prisons, the second is district prisons and the third one is sub prisons. The prison system in India in the contemporary modern sense of the closed prisons has its origin in the British period when the Prisons Act of 1894 was enacted. Unfortunately, the basic legislative framework of the prison system in India is still governed by the same act. However, different states have formulated their own prison manuals for the day to day administration of their prisons. All these prison manuals derive their authority from the same archaic law, the Prisons Act of 1894. In India, traditional closed prisons are principally of three types. The first is the central prison, the second is the district prison, the third is sub prison. There may also be certain special prisons, for example, prisons which are exclusively meant for female convicts, borstal institutions and special prisons as well. As far as infrastructure is concerned, the central prisons are better equipped to receive hardened criminals and convicts who have been given life imprisonment or imprisonment of more than seven years. District prisons not only lodge convicts, but also have a sizable population of under trials. Mostly under trials are lodged in sub prisons. Now, let us have a look as to number of prisons in this country in the year 2012. According to the data released by National Crime Records Bureau in the year 2012, there were 127 central jails, 340 district jails, 806 sub jails, 20 exclusive prisons for women, 46 open prisons, 21 borstal schools, 31 special jails and there were 3 other prisons. Total number of jail inmates as on 31st of December 2013 was 3,85,135. Out of this population, the male prisoners were 3,68,184 that shall be 95.6% whereas the population of female prisoners was a mere 16,951 that would be 4.4 percent of the entire prison population of India. Now, it is also to be remembered that the biggest problem of Indian prisons today is overcrowding. The data shows that in 2010, the occupancy rate was 115.1 percent, which slightly fell to 112.1 percent in the year 2011. And slightly rose to 112.2 percent in the year 2012. It is also very important for us to note that 70 percent of the prison population is that of under trials. Coming to the methods, procedures and institutions which are comprised in the correctional system in India. Let us first discuss parole. Parole is the planned release and community supervision of incarcerated offenders before expiration of their prison sentence. Parole means the release of a prisoner temporarily for a special purpose before the expiry of a sentence on the promise of good behavior and return to the prison. Rules governing parole vary from state to state. It has been held that Parole is a release from jail, prison or other internment after actually being in jail serving part of sentence. In Dadu versus State of Maharashtra, AIR 2000, Supreme Court 3203 at para 6, the Supreme Court has observed that paroles are usually granted to the convicts to enable them to fulfill their social and family obligations and normally do not extend beyond one month at a time. 
in exceptional circumstances, the duration of parole may be for three months. Parole is the prerogative of the executive and the judiciary seldom interferes in the decisions taken by the executive government to allow or deny parole except where the decision is manifestly arbitrary and malafide. This interference in the executive's decision to allow or deny parole can only be used sparingly and under Article 226, 32, 136 and 142 of the Constitution. Exercising their powers under Section 432 of Code of Criminal Procedure 1973, the appropriate government, including the state governments, may also suspend the sentence of a convict for such period as may be prescribed. Normally, this period is one month. It has been held that parole is not suspension of sentence. The convict continues to be serving the sentence despite granting of parole under the statute, rules, jail manuals or the government orders. Now coming to the second concept in the correctional system, probation is by definition is release of the convict under the supervision of social worker or an officer of the court instead of sending him or her to the closed prison. Probation therefore is a method of discipline and treatment. In India, offenders who have been convicted of an offence punishable with fine only or with imprisonment for a term of seven years or less or a young convict below the age of 21 years or a woman convict when the offence for which conviction has been recorded does not carry life imprisonment or death sentence and the convict was not previously sentenced for some other offence meaning thereby that the convict is a first time offender, the court may direct his release under probation. This is in view of section 360 of CRPC. Section 361 of CRPC further provides that if a convict is eligible for probation under section 360 of CRPC but has not been so released on probation, the trial court or the court which convicts him shall record the reasons for not releasing such a convict on probation. It means that the criminal justice administration wants probation to be the rule and jail to be an exception. Apart from the general law on probation as contained in CRPC, probation of offenders is governed by the Probation Offenders Act of 1958. However, some states have their own probation laws which even predate the Probation of Offenders Act of 1958. For example, the United Province Prisoners Release on Probation Act 1938 gives power to the executive government to release a prisoner on terms of a license. Though the legislation talks about probation, but that is essentially not the concept of probation as provided in Probation of Offenders Act of 1958 or under Section 360 of CRPC. In essence, probation or its denial is to be decided by the court which has tried the accused person. Whereas, under this 1938 legislation, it is the executive and not the judicial organ of the state which shall take a decision to release a person on terms of a license. Similarly, the United Province First Offenders Probation Act of 1938, which is often hailed as the front runner amongst probation laws, is also fundamentally different in its sweep and scope from the Probation Offenders Act 1958, because it also allows only the executive to take a decision to release an offender once he has been convicted and sentenced and has been lodged in prison to release him on probation or not. The Probation of Offenders Act even provides for release of certain offenders after admonition. 
this is not similar to release on probation as the procedural requirements are different. Convicts may be released after admonition for offenses punishable under section 379, section 380, section 381, section 404 or section 420 of the Indian Penal Code or where the sentence is not more than two years under Indian Penal Code or some other law and there is no proof of previous conviction. This is in view of section 3 of the Probation of Offenders Act. Decision to release on probation is taken by the court having due regard to the circumstances of the case including the nature of the offense and the character of the offender and also the report if any of the probation officer concerned with the case. The court may also direct that the convict so released shall remain under the supervision of a probation officer so named in the order of probation. Conditions are usually imposed on the convict before he or she is released on probation or supervision. This may include a requirement to reside in a particular place and abstain from intoxicants, etc. Recently, in the year 2013, in Sanjay Dath versus State of Maharashtra, AIR 2013, Supreme Court 2687, where the accused charged under TADA, an arms act, was acquitted of TADA charges on ground that the possession of lethal weapons in notified area was not for terrorism but for personal safety and was convicted only under the arms act. Considering circumstance and nature of the offense, the accused was held not entitled to benefit of release on probation. It is also to be remembered that the accused who have been found guilty under certain socio-economic uh, legislations, they shall not be entitled to probation under the Probation of Offenders Act. It has been held that enforcement of Probation of Offenders Act in a particular area excludes the applicability of the provisions of Section 360 and Section 361 of Code of Criminal Procedure. This is so because probation under Section 360 of CRPC and under Probation of Offenders Act are conceptually and fundamentally different from each other. The requirements for releasing the convict on probation are also different under these two different enactments. Now let us have a comparative view of probation under the general and the special law. Firstly, only the first offender if over 21 years of age punishable only with imprisonment of less than 7 years shall be eligible for probation under section 360 of CRPC. However, the Probation Offenders Act applies to any person of any age. Additionally, a male first offender under the age of 21 years or a woman first offender of any age who has not been found guilty of an offence punishable with life imprisonment or death penalty shall be eligible for probation under section 360 of Code of Criminal Procedure. Under Probation of Offenders Act, the offence should not be punishable with death or life imprisonment. There is no role of probation officers under section 360 of Code of Criminal Procedure, whereas release on probation under Probation of Offenders Act is almost always under the supervision of a probation officer. Also, under the Probation of Offenders Act, no disqualification attaches to the convict released on probation. There is no parallel provision in Section 360 of Code of Criminal Procedure. Now, coming to another similar concept called furlough. Furlough is leave of absence granted to a prisoner on certain grounds for a specified period. It is mean to allow the convict to meet his or her family away from the depressing environments of the closed prison and feel rejuvenated. 
फरलोज आर वेरियसली नोन एज टेम्प्ररी लीव होम विजिट्स और टेम्प्ररी कम्युनिटी रिलीज ऑल दो नो पर्टिकुलर रीजन इज रिक्वायर फॉर ग्रांटिंग फर लो इट मे बी ग्रांटेड फॉर रीजन सच एज कॉन्जुगल विजिटिंग प्रोवाइडिंग केयर एंड मॉरल सपोर्ट टू द एलिंग फैमिली मेंबर्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल स्पाउस चिल्ड्रन एंड पेरेंट्स पार्टिसिपेशन इन रिलीजियस सेलिब्रेशन विद द फैमिली एंड पार्टिसिपेशन इन मैरिजेस एंड लास्ट राइट एक्सेट्रा हैविंग कंपेटिव व्यू ऑफ parole and for law we can point out that parole is released from prison for certain specified purpose whereas no specified purpose is required for release on furlough period spent on parole is not counted as period spent in prison whereas period spent during furlough is treated spent in the prison parole is allowed only after the expiration of a minimum prison term no minimum prison term need be completed for furlough now coming to another very very innovative modern concept within the correctional system in this country the open prisons it seems that the open prisons are epitome of correctional system the reason being that open prisons allow the convict to live in an environment which is almost similar to the open society and feel at home the first open prison was established in the state of uttar pradesh in the year 1952 at the behest of a great social reformer dr sampurna anand today across country there are around 50 such prisons in india the only limitation which the open prisons place upon the convicts is that while they can work from dusk to dawn in the open environments they have to come back uh, to the closed prisons after the day not all the prisoners are eligible for the open prison system usually life convicts who show potential for reform are considered eligible eligible for the same those convicted on account of terrorism dacoity kidnapping and abduction etc are generally not considered eligible for open prisons even convicts serving short prison term are not considered eligible for release in open prisons now the law in this country provides an entirely different correctional system for juveniles because it is felt that juveniles are the most amenable lot amongst the delinquents for corrections children and juveniles are treated as a class and the juvenile justice care and protection of children act 2000 the jj act provides for a completely pro reformation correctional system for the juvenile offenders even before the jj act came into force in 2000 the reformatory school act the borstal schools act the boys act of 1960 and the juvenile justice act of 1986 provided for a robust correctional system for juveniles under the present correctional system for the juveniles absolute focus is on treatment correction reformation and rehabilitation of juvenile delinquents delinquent juveniles who have not completed the age of 18 years cannot be kept with adult convicts in the regular jails prisons in any circumstances delinquent juveniles if found guilty are not punished rather certain orders may be passed against these juveniles such as community service or an order for keeping in special homes for a period not exceeding 3 years in any circumstance to sum up the modern penological approach towards offenders is similar to the approach of the medical science towards a sick person a sick person needs treatments a sick person needs remedies criminals who have been found guilty by the competent court they are also sick people and require compassion empathy by the society and the state therefore punishment is not 
seen as an end in itself but only a means towards a greater end that is reformation, rehabilitation and correction of the offender. The correctional system is concerned with balancing of the conflicting interest of the convict and the society. The society's interest also lies in reclaiming a convict who on account of his mistake or criminal conduct has been removed from it. Correctional system in this country comprises of reformative measures, vocational training programs, open and distance learning, stress management, etc. and all these are aimed at corrections and rehabilitation. Probation, parole, furlough, open prisons all work in tandem in spite of certain technical differences in their implementation and operation within the realm of correctional system. Thank you.